Right. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's good to see you again, man. It's been a been a yeah, little while. Great to see. It has. Yeah, it's uh, funny. I mean, you being over there and and me being here, uh, this is how I meet everyone nowadays. <laughs> over, the very new world we live in. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, how was your Fourth of July weekend? First of all, it's been a- it was. It has been great. We uh we've been waiting on our second child. And, yeah, so uh, so I'm here. Congratulations. So it's, been ex- it's been thank you. It's been exciting because at night Emily starts having contractions and we can't tell if we need to go to the hospital or wait it out because she's had contractions the last three nights. But last night was a full moon, which is the night that we had our first daughter. And, um, so uh, she had really strong contractions last night, but they were a little intermittent. So we waited around and then they eventually fizzled out. But, uh, yeah. so other than that, any the day excitement now. of that, we've had a great, great 4th of July weekend and yeah, it'll happen any day. Now. Yeah. Well, hopefully not in the next 15 minutes. That would be, that'd be really great. <laughs> yeah. I've got my, uh, I've got my phone in my hand and if she texts me, then we'll know we're ready to go. <laughs> But uh, it's an exciting time for you all, Rain, because you got this new album, Ain't Looking Back, coming out August 14th. And I know it's been a long time coming for you. The fans are really excited. So what can we expect from the new project? Well, um, I'm really thankful for the whole, the whole project. Jim Moose Brown, um, he, helped, he was the producer and helped me achieve more than I could have ever dreamed as far as uh, what my second album would look like. But um, Ain't Looking Back is one of the songs on the album. It's a song about letting go of your past and finding the ability to to look to a bright future through finding forgiveness and redemption, you might say. And um, everything around that, there's some fun songs on the album that are just, you know, lighthearted and um, cheeky, I guess you all would say. but we uh you know it starts off with a song called a music man which i played overseas uh often when i was there at c to c it's a song about uh always loving music and trying to do it for the right reasons and then it it ends with a a song called jonas which is a really poignant song about truth and where we might find it and um a a bedrock of where we might start to build if we want to recognize if there is anything true so uh it's probably a christian worldview song you would you would notice when you hear it but uh anyways yeah i'm I'm excited about the whole project and and uh, i'm not ashamed of any part of it and you mentioned working with jim moose brown on the production and he's worked with some of the best in the business over the years so how much did you enjoy working with him from a creative standpoint and how much does how much did he inspire you throughout this process yeah, so I've been inspired by Moose since I moved to town. He was the piano player on my first demo session when I moved to Nashville. And uh, I immediately made note of him. First of all, he's incredibly funny. He's a comedian. And then second of all, he's just wildly musical and very in tune with the song and the lyrics and the artist and making sure that he's enhancing the most important parts about the music. So the more I grew to know Moose, you know, I made a record with someone else, Tony Brown, um, but I also got to work with him often. And I, I didn't realize he was a producer the first the first four years of knowing him. So when I realized he was a, a producer, then my wheels started turning because I loved what he did so much. And when him and I got together, it was it is the most um, freeing musical experiences I've ever been on in my life as far as creating goes. And uh, he's incredibly inspiring to be yourself and and to achieve what is already in your heart and not to change who you are for any reason. And um, those are all my guiding lights in music as well. And it was so life giving to be with someone that uh, I work with someone that saw it the same way. And you've already mentioned a music man, which you played in the UK before. Um, you got Jamie Johnston involved in that as well. So did you did you always have it in mind that that was going to be a duet, or was that just an opportunity that, that came about? No, we recorded the song, and then uh, Moose uh, actually produced uh, the first three Jamie Johnson records that did well. 
And so he has a good connection with Jamie. And he says, hey, you want me to call him? I bet you he, he likes the message. He would like the message of this song um, because it's kind of his view of why he makes music as well. And so we sent it to him and he said that he would love to do it. And, and I think it makes, for a, a couple different reasons, it makes the song make more sense. Um, you know, there's the idea that he's identifying with the same story. So my hope with the song is not only to sing about myself, but to, to subconsciously make you aware that there are kind of two kinds of art makers. There's some people that just make art to ring the bell and make the money and be famous. And art is essentially just a, a wagon that they ride on to fame. And then there's people that uh, the, the wagon is the fun part. Um, and, and, and so him identifying with that makes you subconsciously aware that other people feel that way too. And then there's the, the smaller part when the last line is you might remember when I'm gone. Um, and the fact that he is singing it and I'm not gives you this idea that I, I have left the building and someone <laughs> else is singing the last song. Um, and that was Jamie's idea, which gave it a, another level. So all of this kind of evolved into a special thing. And, and I couldn't be more thankful that he'd be willing to do it because I'm such a huge fan. And I was looking at the, the track list for the album and the songwriting credits, and you've got the likes of Matt and Trevor from Old Dominion on there, Billy and Randy Montana, Tom Douglas. I mean, the, the list goes on. So tell us about that process of choosing outside songs and deciding what works for you, because it must be such a privilege to have all these guys sending songs to you. Yeah. Yeah, we listened to so many songs and some of the songs that we we did, um, like Ain't Looking Back and Boy Gets the Girl, I, I reached out to one of my favorite writers, Mark Nestler, and I told him to send uh, his favorite songs that he couldn't believe it had not been recorded. And he did that and I almost recorded six, <laughs> but I, I narrowed it down to two. Um, and then all the other outside songs were actually just random other than Jonas, which is the Tom Douglas song, um, he wrote it with Dean Dillon. Um, but everything else was kind of random run-ins. You know, people would send things and I didn't know who wrote them. And I would fall in love with the song and learn the writer later. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't ever have like one set way that I, I either write a song or find a song. Um, I just try to you let my compass be does the song move me however i heard it or however i found out about it is it a good song does it make sense with my life and where i'm at and the record and does it move me and that's kind of how i pick the songs yeah and i want to know about um old home place because it said on the track huh. you've got your all-star band on there so tell us what that's all about and what we can expect so while we were waiting ironically um I'm not a huge fan of loops, but certain songs feel like they need something underneath the surface. So we tried to, to morph uh, a couple songs on the album where there's really human musical things going on. And then there's a computer loop happening underneath that uh, we, we experimented with that. So ironically, while the drummer was programming a loop, I was sitting there playing my favorite bluegrass song into the mic to check the volume levels. And it was old home place. And Moose said, hey, Mo, before we finish this loop, um, let's just record that really quick. And uh, we might put it on the album. And I said, you're crazy. He goes, no, I'm serious. Even if it's not on the album, it'll be good to have it. He says, I have an idea for the drummer to come in and play halftime. He says, because you're a bluegrasser, you'll probably hate it. But just trust me. <laughs> and so uh, we took off and we did that. And we recorded the bass track um, in like 45 minutes, 30 minutes it was done and we moved on and it so happened that like three weeks later marty stewart heard it because he was in the studio and moose said hey i want to play something that we did that was fun and marty said i want to play on that and uh, a few weeks later ricky skaggs somehow heard it and he said i want to play on that and so then when we had those two names we said you know what let's just get an all-star band and try to think about some of the other people that were on the original track that i loved which was from jd crow in the new south so I asked J.D. Crow, the banjo player, if he would be up for playing. And he said, of course, Jerry Douglas was on the original track. And we got Jerry Douglas. And then we got my favorite fiddle player, Aubrey Haney. Uh, and Barry Bales played the bass. 
and uh, we had an all-star band and 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 they recorded the same day we all got together the same day and we videoed it there's going to be a music video uh, that's based around it as well and um we they put all of their parts down over the bass track and and it was uh, a really really uh, interesting experience to see all of my heroes or most of my heroes in the same room at the same time recording for my record so it's pretty humbling yeah, well, that must have been such a privilege. I, I guess that's the, the fantastic part of the Nashville community, isn't it? That you've got so many of these connections that you can just call on and they just do it straight away. I mean, that must be such a, an honor. Yeah, of course. It, I, I, can't, I never dreamed that it could happen. Um, but I have a lot of loving people around me that helped move the pawns in a way where it worked <laughs> out. and I couldn't be more thankful. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, you recently released Local Honey as well um, a couple of weeks ago. And I know that your mom deserves a lot of credit for that one, doesn't she? Because you were involved in the yeah. songwriting process. I was walking into a songwrite uh, with Adam Wood and Will Nance and had nothing to write about. And I tell people as a joke that they rarely bring in any ideas. So I was kind of <laughs> nervous. No, I'm not. I, that's totally a joke. But um, my mom texts me as I was walking in the front door and uh she just said local honey that's all she said and i tell people since i'm all grown up and don't live at home anymore or at her home anymore i didn't think she was telling me of a grocery list that i needed to pick up local honey on the way home so my mind immediately went to song and i brought the idea to them and i couldn't have made up that that song without the other two writers and we just kind of laughed and and made fun of it until it turned into a song and and there it is and that's how we kind of treated the music video as well because the song is essentially a joke it's 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 light-hearted and fun but it's not corny in a sense that that it's just fun for the sake of being fun there's actually some some comedy involved in it that he fell in love with local honey and that's all he wanted to take home and that's all he wanted on his tongue <laughs> that's all he wanted on his lips was her so um anyways that's how we treated the the music video as well and i think it, you'll get a laugh out of it i was going to ask you about the, the general process of music videos how much do you enjoy kind of getting your teeth into them or is it just a kind of part of the job for you do you, do you enjoy those days? i you i used to not like it at all um and i think it's because i was working with people that i didn't feel comfortable around and that was just due to bouncing around nashville trying you know not, not every you know great video producer works for every artist you know it's it's kind of like a marriage you got to find the right person and i don't think i'd found quite the right person until i met a guy named nathaniel maddox who lives in missouri and uh you know apart from music or art i find that i have to i have to work with people that essentially have a similar worldview as me because then when we're making art, we're not uh, wrestling the entire time. And I can completely trust someone that looks at the world uh, closely to the way that I look at it. And, and Nathaniel has become a friend outside of art and work. Um, and so then when we make, make music or make uh, video work together, uh, it doesn't feel like work. We feel like friends that are hanging out, that are talking about life, and how life influences art and how can that happen here today and what we're doing and and it feels very meaningful and abiding and there's a friendship there so now making music videos is my favorite thing in the world um and as much as i like music or anything else so uh, and it has to do with a relationship with a, a person that i respect very much yeah and you've been doing quite a lot of video content recently because you've been doing these Mo Monday videos. Doing like, it's kind of like a documentary series of keeping fans up to date about the album. So how have you found that whole process? And have you, have you noticed that fans are even more engaged at the moment because there's not a lot else yeah. to do? Yeah, and just to let you in, Nathaniel, the same person that does my music videos, did all of that, all the Mo Monday stuff. He has followed me around to my hometown, out on the road, um in the studio we do a lot of performance shots acoustic performance videos um and um, we're trying to make there be a continuity with all the video work by using nathaniel um uh yeah we're really blessed that we got all of that in the can we have hours of footage and all of it came about before covid happened so now we're able to pick and choose and set back and edit little mo monday videos uh, until the sun until the cows come home 
because we have it all in the bag, which is a, a blessing. Um, and, and yes, it seems like through uh, taking people on a journey about my life, which in turn hopefully gives more meaning to the music that I'm making because they say I'm not making it up out of thin air, um, but they see that it's a, a reflection of my life. Uh, I think it causes people to be more engaged, more invested. Um, at least when I fell in love with Johnny Cash and Tony Rice and all of that, I, I wanted to know everything about the person because I wasn't just falling in love with the music. I was falling in love with the whole thing, uh, the interviews, the the lifestyle and how it, how it mattered to them in light of their art and all of that. So I'm hoping to, to, to satisfy that in, in fans and, and listeners. And, and I don't know if my life is all that interesting, <laughs> but uh, I feel an obligation to, to let them into my life. Um, so, yeah. And just finally, though, before I let you go, I need to speak to you about kind of plans for the rest of this year, because have you got anything that's kind of set in stone at the moment, or is it really difficult to plan for shows and things, especially with a baby on the way as well? It's Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't see us going, uh, three more days without having the baby be here because our due date is in two days and and they normally induce labor at at the due date mm. um so the the baby um when she gets here then i'm i'm free to go on the road again emily says because we got to <laughs> buy di we got to buy diapers so um, um but anyways uh we have some shows and to be honest with you i don't know which ones they are because so many of them have been moved either forward or back they, they they move both ways depending on the the information that they get from the government but um anyways um uh, i don't know what dates there are in the books but i know that there are dates within the next month that i get to play um but i think if people follow the social media and uh, try to hit a moving target they could maybe run into me somewhere across the country in the near future that's good stuff. Well, Mo, I'm going to let you go. Thank you for doing this today. I really appreciate the uh, appreciate the time. And best Dan, looking. I yeah, I appreciate it, and I always appreciate uh, talking with you, Dan. Uh, likewise, man. Best of luck with the album, and we'll hopefully see you in the UK when all this uh, nonsense is over. I, I hope so too. We'll pray for that. All right, man. I'll let you go. Thanks, Mo. Appreciate it. See you. Thank you.